really enjoyed that, I was blessed. And our readings this morning are taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, um, and also from James's letter. But Matthew chapter 7 says, at verse 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. <clears throat> Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his sons ask for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to, do, to, to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. And we'll look a little bit more at some of those verses tonight about the wolves. And in James chapter 4, verses 1 to 3 we read, what James 4, 1 to 3, But where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they come from your desires for pleasure, that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. So may God bless the, the reading of, of his precious word. And Matthew, he writes his gospel for the Jewish Christian community, for the Jewish converts, and throughout Matthew's Gospel, he highlights that Jesus is the Messiah. And when we look into Matthew's Gospel and the other Gospels, we, we gather together information about prayer. And then when we come up to the letter of James, and James was written for the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad, James's letter is very practical about living for Jesus and following Jesus. And both Matthew and James were servants of Christ, making Jesus known. And like the other disciples and, and the other women in the upper room, that they were gathered there with a passion for prayer to God. You see, the, the Jews were a people of prayer. The Christian Jews were a people of prayer. And they were there at, on the day in the upper room. And they were about to get baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And then upon the Gentile believers, the baptism of the Holy Spirit would come up down upon them. And prayer was a key in all of that. So what does Matthew 7 verse 7 actually mean? As Matthew is, is revealing for us more of Jesus' teaching on prayer. Um, and I do wonder, was Bob Dylan influenced by Matthew 7 verse 7 when he writes about knocking on heaven's door? You see, Jesus has given us this model of prayer in Matthew 6, where he teaches us our Father. He teaches us the Lord's Prayer. And in chapter 7, Jesus describes the attitude which the children of God should, 
by, by which the children of God shall bring their requests to God the Father. As God is willing to answer prayers for those who are sincerely seeking Him, verse 8 says, For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Now some scholars of, of scripture suggest that verse 7, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you, is, 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 a, pass is a verse that is rising in intensity. It's, an, it's in this lovely poetic arrangement. An ask meaning a single request. Seek referring to being more persistent and knock implies deeper persistence of knocking on that door. This would mean ask, ask again, keep on asking. The Greek verbs refer to constant action and prayer is this action where we're bringing our requests and our prayer requests to the Lord. In prayer we must keep persisting and not give up. We can never pray enough. It can, you know, I can remember when, when I was a young Christian and um, someone once said to me, they said, if you have to pray more than once about something, then you have a lack of faith. But very clearly, here God wants to hear our prayers being persistent, asking persistently. Interestingly, I've also had people say to me, you should be able to cast out demons in one go by using the name Jesus only once. However, the Bible reveals when Jesus was was um, confronted by the man with a legion of demons, Jesus had to continually keep on rebuking those spirits within legion in Luke 8 verse 29. So there is something in persisting in prayer that glorifies God and pushes evil back. And back in chapter 7, the heart of Jesus, the heart of Jesus' point is, God is listening, paying attention to his people, and is ready to give them good gifts. It's an incredible truth. The God of all creation cares so deeply about his children, he hears them when, he, when they pray. He loves to hear their voice. He loves to see their dependence upon him. And even better, he answers them. And even those who lack faith, but pursue truth will find it in Christ Jesus. Mark 9 verse 24 says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. How <laughs> many of us go to the Lord, Lord, I believe in you, but help my unbelief. I'm, I'm knocking on heaven's door, but, but I'm struggling, Lord. Help me, Lord. Now, since God is listening and loving, Jesus tells his listeners to ask, seek, and to knock. And when you ask, it will be given. When you seek, you will find. And when you knock, the right door will be open. You know, Jesus tells us to bring our requests, to look for answers, and to ask to be let into God's presence on these promises that we have a God who answers. We have a God who hears us. You know, how important is prayer to each and every one of us? And, and Jesus, in the Gospels, he will continue to clarify the meaning and the importance of prayer as, we, as it's linked into this relationship with God the Father that we have. 
these promises of receiving and asking persistently are not a way of manipulating God. Prayer is never presented in Scripture as a means of merely to get our own way. As if prayer were a magical formula or a system of positive successful thinking. Speak it out and it will happen. Those are my words. See, when I come to prayer, I pray, Father, Father, I'm giving God my request and asking God to come down into the situation. No, prayer is an invitation to interact with a generous Heavenly Father who loves us, who loves to hear our pr the prayers of His people, and He gives good gifts. Now, do we see the silver lining, as it were, of God in our lives? And we can count our blessings and give thanks to the Lord. Even when situations have been a bit stressful, can we see how God is at work? See, we come to God in faith and we make our requests known to Him. Faith is a trust in the love and wisdom of God. It's what our Bible teaches. But our modern world says faith is a trust in the power of the mind to achieve what we want. But Christian faith is in God. And that means we might not get what we want or pray <coughs> for um or pray. We might not get what we want from prayer or, or from the Lord because our faith is based on God's sovereign and loving will. Now our modern world says results are guaranteed because faith is based on a predictable force. For the Christian, they can trust God who is all-knowing who answers prayer in the right way, as we know it can be yes, no, maybe later, not yet. God can see the beginning from the end. We can't see the beginning from the end, but God does see it. And God sees the eternal picture and answers according to his loving will. Maybe James had Matthew 7 in mind when he wrote about pride promoting strife, when he said in James 4, 2-3, Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. James has just corrected these believers because, because they're asking out of a worldly wisdom. In fact, they are driven by envy and selfish ambition. And when you get envy and selfish ambition in your prayer life, you end up trying to manipulate God. Which isn't really prayer. It makes a mess of it. You know, sometimes the best times... I personally, in prayer, is when you're broken, when you're wounded, when the pressure is on, even when you feel disconnected, because you're not pretending, and you're not manipulating. You are who you are in the presence of the Lord by His grace, and a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. You see, this Envy and ambition, selfish ambition, this does not reflect trust in God to provide all that is needed and much more and beyond. As a result, their lives are consumed with fights and quarrels in the church that James was writing to. See, James identified their root problem. They didn't even ask God for what they wanted. They believed in God. But they did not trust that if God did say no, that would be the best for them. 
How are we when God says, no, not yet. No, this isn't the right thing for you. God says, I can see the beginning from the end. And I've got to say no in this situation. It can be hard for us to accept because we want to get our own way and we want to be selfish. But when we humble ourselves and we go the way of the Lord and when he opens up heaven, when, when, he, when, when he enters in, we look around and we say, Lord, you were right all along. You knew the best for me in this situation. And here in verse 3, James reveals that when they did ask God for what they wanted, they were simply trying to manipulate God. Their prayers were not really requests. They were a, an effort to make God serve, serve their selfish ambition. They weren't engaging in trust in the Father who loved them and wanted to provide what was truly best for them. Instead, they were trying to push God into their worldly approach to get what they wanted. The God who loves us will not allow himself to be used to serve envy and selfish ambition. God wants us to come to him in humility and in trust, asking, seeking, knocking. God hears the prayer of the humble, but he resists the proud in heart. You know, asking, seeking, knocking, and to allow God to give us the good he has for us as a gift in his perfect timing. Prayer it, in the right way, you know, it glorifies God. It keeps our hearts in peace as we are focused on him. We must have faith in God the Father and not in the power of the mind as the Holy Spirit can perfect our prayers and present them as perfect to God in heaven. They go up to the Lord like incense. Now sometimes I wonder, you know, when we're in our little prayer meetings, <laughs> How much incense of prayer is going up to the Lord. And how he, he would smell that. He would see that. He would hear that. And it would bring him glory. Because God is a perfect judge. And his decree is final. Nothing can stop what God releases from heaven into our lives. In prayer, in humility, we must acknowledge that our plans are dependent on the Lord and He can change our plans, He can change our requests and sometimes as we're going along, He'll cause us to go in a different direction that we anticipated so that we can learn. See, we are called to put a hand to the plow and to keep following the Lord Jesus, not looking back. You see, if you take your hand off the plow and you look back, you can go all over the place. But what we have to do is keep looking and focused on the Lord. We hold on to that gospel plow in prayer for His will and His kingdom to come. Let us enter by the narrow gate onto a narrow path and live a life of asking, seeking, and knocking. The life of prayer, learning who God truly is, is depended... How can I put You see, in prayer, you are learning who God is. You're learning His character. You're learning His presence. It's cultivating a, a, a friendship with, with, with Him through the work of Christ on that cross so that you know what pleases the Lord and you know what is on his heart. So what happens is eventually when you come into prayer, 
your heart is like one with the Lord and you know what is on the heart of God and as you pray then you see God's heart being revealed as he answers according to his sovereign will. So may we not give up in our prayer lives. May we not trust in the power of our mind but may we have full dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ as he fills us with the Holy Spirit and enables us to offer up prayers to God. And sometimes those prayers, yes, they are mostly in words, but sometimes it's coming into God's presence and it's almost a sigh. Sometimes it is tears. Sometimes it, 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 it's, Lord, I, I, I just don't know how to put these things into words, but here I am. I'm knocking, and you know the cry of my heart that is asking for you to intervene in this situation as I seek you. Lord, I am weak, but you are strong, and I am knocking on heaven's door. For your kingdom to come your, and your will to be done down here on earth. Are we a people of prayer who pray in such a way that it glorifies God and keeps our hearts in peace as we focus on him for his will to be done, for his glory. Let us change the world by being on our knees for the glory of the Lord.